Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so, first of all, yes, uh, and how to proceed this one? This one okay. First of all, I would like to thank uh, DAS, Mr. Li Xiang, for uh, inviting us to be uh, in the stage again because we skipped last year. Uh, this is so honored for us. And today I would like to share with you our very simple survey. It's about the level of understanding of dyslexia across uh, all people in Indonesia. So as uh, I've been introduced earlier, uh, that I and Dr. Purboyo um, are the um, leader of the Dyslexia Association of Indonesia, and we are both uh, pediatrician. Um, let me share a bit why we conduct this uh, simple survey. So in many occasions when we attended uh, International Conference of Dyslexia, the most uh, favorite questions arose is, uh, what about dyslexia in Indonesia? Uh, how, how, how much is the prevalence rate? So that's the common questions. And also when I uh, dealt with uh, journals, of course, I would like to know the prevalence rate of other countries. But unfortunately, we have not had the data yet because um, uh, dyslexia is quite um, uh, not famous in Indonesia, <laughs> right? So uh, Dyslexia Association of Indonesia uh, was found in 2009, so uh, this year would be the one decade birthday, right? But still, um, we cannot um, conduct or we cannot do the study of prevalence because before doing the prevalence study, uh, we need to make sure whether uh, all the professionals, all the centers have similar perception or similar understanding about dyslexia, right? So uh, in order to have that kind of information, so the first thing that we have to do is to conduct this simple survey to dig some more information, uh, how, how similar or how different uh, the perception about dyslexia. Uh, across all professionals in our country. So, um, actually this uh, study started in May 2017 and it's still ongoing until now. Uh, but now, uh, today I would like to present the data that has been collected until April 2019. So it's approximately two years data. And as you see that uh, the respondents is uh, almost hit 2,000 respondents. And you may wonder how uh, we reached those uh, respondents. So um, as uh, Dyslexia Association of Indonesia, in line with our vision and mission, the first decade is raising awareness across all cities, all parts, all islands of Indonesia. I think many of you have been to Indonesia, Bandung. Uh, Pasar Baru, <laughs> okay, Bali maybe, <laughs> yeah, Pasar Baru, Bali uh, is quite uh, famous, so um, if one of you never been to Pasar Baru, Bandung, then you should be there, okay, so uh, as, you, as you can see that Indonesia is a very big country, it's a huge country, consists of many islands, it's, it's stated that uh, we have more than 13,000 something, and also like India, we have many uh, languages and dialects, but then we have one national language, which is called Bahasa Indonesia. So uh, as a team of Dyslexia Association of Indonesia, we kind of uh, built a group of parents, which we call Dyslexia Parent Support Group. So um, many of our patients, uh, of course, they are parents, and then uh, they uh, underwent a workshop for parents. After that, we assume that many of them are quite educated regarding dyslexia knowledge. And then they have a moral call to some, somehow um, distribute and spread the knowledge of dyslexia into their own community. Maybe they went to their churches, they went to the mosque, they went to the uh, neighborhood, they went to the office of their husbands, and then they started to educate the communities regarding dyslexia. So uh, Dyslexia Association of Indonesia uh, 
collaborating with Dyslexia Parent Support Group, which distributed all over Indonesia, uh, right from Sumatra Island, and um, wait, I'm not sure. Is this? Yeah, okay. Sumatra Island, Kalimantan, Sulawesi, Papua, uh, Java Island, Bali, Lombok, etc. So we have um, Dyslexia Parent Support Group in every island, actually. So uh, therefore, we, from the team from Dyslexia Association of Indonesia, collaborating with the Dyslexia Parent Support Group, we visited some places, many places, and then we conduct symposium, and then parenting class, teacher's class, workshop. And then uh, usually before we started the event, we asked the participant to fill in the questionnaires. So that's the way we got the respondent. And um, it's a very simple survey. Um, they can uh, have it the questionnaire by fill in the Google form survey. So it's very simple. And that's why the research uh, still open until now. So whenever we conduct any kind of event, we ask the participant uh, to fill in the question first. Uh, OK, and um, until now, we have uh, more than 2,000 respondents already. Uh, but when the data is submitted, it's uh, 1,950 respondents. So most of the respondents were female. Uh, I think in this uh, event, it's also most of the female, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Go female. <laughs> okay. And then um, the most dominant uh, age group is 30 to 39 years old. So we believe that uh, this is um, the most productive years of mom that um, began to concern about uh, their children, right? And uh, most of them are bachelor degree, and we also uh, got a graduation from senior high school diploma and magister. And in terms of profession, of course, uh, many of them, most of them were teachers. It's uh, approximately 40% something. And as you can see, there's also a doctor. It's almost always interesting for us because <laughs> we are, we're both doctors. Um, they uh, happen to be our participants because they attended uh, our symposium or parenting class or meetings and they attended actually as parents. Um, very uh, rare that they, they attended the meeting being a medical professional who really wanted to learn about dyslexia. <laughs> it has to be something happened in the family first, which is dyslexia, then they have interest in um, having the symposium or something like that. I don't know, um, maybe I would like to uh, have some share from DAS, how many doctors or medical professionals who come to this kind of event in order to uh, enhance their knowledge. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, maybe this is a good study. Yeah. Okay. Um, and as we know that uh, dyslexia is a sp one of specific learning difficulty which occur in a normal or above average intelligence. So we asked about that to the respondent. Most of them, they believe so, but then there are still uh, about 13% of them believe that dyslexia has something to do with, you know, below average condition, below average IQ condition. So related to stupidity, right? So, and then, um, most of them, about 66%, most of them, they do believe that dyslexia is something that genetic base is inherited, it's genetic base, but still 40%, they had some issue about the causes of dyslexia. Uh, many of them still believe that dyslexia is due to gadget exposure, due to poor parenting, and Interestingly, due to impairment of spine. I was just talking about this topic with Li Xiang in the poster, and I asked, is there any issue of impairment spine in, in Singapore? And then he said, no, why? <laughs> it's so funny, maybe. So let me share a bit that in my country, uh, impairment of spine and hypotone of fingers are massively believed as a cause of dyslexia because Many of dyslexia children, whenever they 
dealing with paper pencil, they often cannot sit upright position, right? And then they just like put their chins on the table, or maybe they try to be in a sleeping position on the table and until they fall into sleep. So this is assumed as a impairment of spine. And also because they're, they're having poor handwriting skill, it is also assumed as a hypotone of finger. So this is massively believed in my country. So that's why I really like to have some share from other countries whether this is also a funny belief. Yeah? But then this is so famous, that's, that's, um, that's why I asked in the questionnaire. And 4.5% still believe that dyslexia is uh, due to the impairment of spine. And um, also when I propose uh, some option, three options, three wrong options <laughs> about the underlying medical problems of dyslexia, again, 30% uh, still believe that dyslexia due to poor diet, hypotone, and impairment of spine. And this is, um, this is a good information for us because in our country, there are a lot of centers or a lot of so-called professionals, so-called, I mean quote by quote, uh, who offer a various treatment of dyslexia, like um, specific uh, cake or specific you know, ingredient uh, and sensory integration therapy and you know, fancy treatment. So, uh, so this is the, the real case. And uh, in terms of comorbid, as we know that comorbidity in dyslexia is a rule, it's not an exceptional, right? So I think everybody here already know about that. And fortunately, 84% something they believe uh, that dyslexia has uh, comorbid. And I group this, these kind of comorbids into the uh, blue one and the red one, which uh, the blue ones are condition that has a normal or above normal intelligent score. And at the right side are the uh, medical problem that has a below IQ level. Uh, as an underlying um, condition. And let us take a look that um, approximately half of them believe that ADHD is a comorbid of dyslexia. And of course, uh, conduct disorder and oppositional defined disorder as the comorbid of ADHD. But we can see here again that intellectual disability, impairment of spine, even CP and autism is still believed as the comorbidity of the uh, dyslexia. So in our uh, common practice as a, as a professional, as a medical professional, particularly we are a pediatrician, um, many of the cases they came to us with uh, self-diagnosis, you know. Doctor, I'm, I think my child is dyslexia. Uh, I think my child is autism. I think my child is blah, 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 blah. And then I think my child needs this one, this one, this one. <laughs> and because you have uh, complete centers, can you just, uh, my, my daughter can sign to your centers to have maybe like sensory integration therapy, like something else. So they, they came to us with various background of knowledge. But then um, currently we see them as a very self-confidence in diagnosing themselves, diagnosing their, their, own, their own children. I don't know what happened here. Um, maybe I, I would like to have a sharing from some colleagues. And um, again, this is, you, you may laugh maybe <laughs> because we have riding dolphins as an option for dyslexia treatment. It's uh, massive also in Indonesia, <laughs> riding dolphins and hiking. And again, sensory integration therapy uh, sat on the top of the rank of the treatment of choice of dyslexia in our country. Uh, so I just uh, whispered to Dr. Prabowo just now, um, we have never seen posters or presenters presenting or <laughs> you know, digging out research uh, or journals about that. But then in my country, this is quite famous. And many centers offer, you know, riding dolphins and then dyslexia gone away. Okay? <laughs> you want to sign in? <laughs> uh, 
Okay, and also hiking, something like that. Meditation, music. So, um, I do believe that hiking, go hiking, has many benefits, right? It will build your executive function in terms of planning, organizing, right? Organizing whatever you want to pack according to the place you want to go, uh, time management, etc. But, but it is not something that can cure your dyslexia. So, but in the field, in the understanding of the parents, once uh, the child signing into some regular hiking, then the dyslexia will, you know, going down and subside and fading away. So, um, yeah. Uh, again, I propose three, uh, three untrue uh, intervention for dyslexia, but. Um, yeah, 60% still believe that dyslexia maybe can be cured by uh, having colored lenses, island, or diet, go on a specific diet, and also doing sensory integration therapy. If you follow um, my previous slide, sensory integration therapy is so famous. It's always uh, set on the top of the rank. And then when uh, we ask, um, could dyslexia be early identified? Why would we ask this? Because um, many, many years ago, um, parents came to us and then they told us, doctor, you don't diagnose dyslexia uh, for my child because she's so young, six years old, five years old, something like that, or maybe even already eight years old. And the parents uh, said that according to Google doctor or Facebook doctor, <laughs> you may diagnose as early as 12 years old. Yeah, or yeah, 12 years old. So um, back to one decade ago, it's a really tough homework for us to educate people that we can identify dyslexia as early as possible, especially because we are medical doctors, so um, I think it's more systematic approach for us to identify which one is dyslexia, which one is not. But now I, we can see that, um, most of them believe that dyslexia could be uh, identified as early as possible. And uh, which is not a characteristic of dyslexia. Um, most of them, 77%, believe that dyslexia uh, early intervention would heal dyslexia. So they believe that dyslexia could not be healed. They know that dyslexia is still there, remains there, but we can optimize the performance. So before I close my presentation, um, of course, this is a very simple survey. And we, we uh, realize that we still have uh, many limitation because again, our country is very big and the sample, may not represent yet the whole country. So it's far away still uh, to go, uh, but we are on the track, I suppose. And uh, also, um, we, need to, um, we, we need to have uh, more samples from various background. And later, we hope that uh, this is um, a basis for us to do uh, further action. Like uh, we know from this data that uh, those um, sensory integration therapy, those fancy treatment is still a big issue in our society. So maybe uh, in the future we would like to, um, you know, to stress out, to educate about that topics and maybe to do some research about that. Uh, and um, we are looking forward to having um, some feedback from our colleagues, uh, maybe from, of course, from Singapore, from Mumbai, from Kenya, from Sri Lanka. I don't know what happened in your own countries, <laughs> but this is, uh, this is the truth, uh, a side of Pasar Baru and Bali. <laughs> okay, so uh, with that, I would like to close my presentation. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>